morning, Janelle. You got another, uh, got another lesson for us? Yeah. Not all campsites are equal. And that's okay. And that's really okay. Like this one? This one's really great. <laughs> Maybe got, one of the best. We got a lake, we got views, it's quiet. Hey friend, Levi and Janelle here. In this video, we're sharing 10 lessons that we've learned in our first month living in the van. First month, some of the lessons are more surprising than others. Some of them are to be expected, but uh, let's just jump right into the first one and there's gonna be a table of contents down below if you just wanna skip to the lessons and don't wanna be a part of our travels. Being self-reliant is a total game changer. We've done lots of different versions of travel in our van and most of them we were reliant on other resources for water, electrical, we had to plug in everywhere. And this is the first time we have all of that right here with us everywhere we go. Like we were traveling before fine, and then now that we've actually hit the road with these things that are total extras for just normal road trip, but because this is our home now, it's, it's a complete, it's a different way. It's like a whole new mindset of traveling. It's, hard to explain what that feels like. It's just very freeing. You're spending your time observing and just like going with it instead of thinking, oh, when's the next town? Where are we now? Yeah. Um, how much of this do we have left? Before we get on to lesson number two, we're gonna hit the road and fill you in on what we've been up to this last week. Let's go. So, where we last left you off, uh, we were in Stewart, BC, and since then we've been making a lot of progress north, just putting in some long driving days uh, up from BC and into the Yukon. Oh my God. Just another day on the journey to Alaska. Found some rad campsites, some crazy lakes to swim in. We're actually feeling pretty clean these days because there's so much nice water around. Leaving BC. We made it to the Yukon. Yukon! Larger than life. I stopped when we were halfway up in Hawthorne. And it felt as we were living in our forfeits. Because the ease of making food is so simple when you have everything you need right with you, uh, we end up stopping to buy food way less. And uh, on long driving days, I'm pretty tempted to want to stop in at McDonald's quick, ma mainly because of the convenience. But uh, the reality is it's just as quick to just hop in the back and make up food. So we end up eating out far less and that means we can uh, save some money for the times where we truly want to eat because it's part of the, the visiting experience. So our next lesson is at some point you just have to hit the road because we could have spent months and months still like tweaking the van and making everything perfect and organizing everything just right. And at some point, you just have to decide the van is good enough as it is. And so we just hopped in and went. So it wasn't quite that simple, but you know. <laughs> So next lesson, uh, the shakedown trip. It's essential, especially if you're about to go on a long section of travel. So getting out in the van and actually using it and making sure that all the things are buttoned up. I can't remember what little things we noticed in the first little trip we did around the valley before we came up here to Alaska, but probably the biggest thing about that ties into our next lesson after the shakedown, which is... You don't need as much stuff as you think you need. <laughs> You don't need anywhere near as much stuff. Morning, 
you know. We got a lake, we got views, it's quiet. It's not really any cars driving by. Just have our own space, lots of sun. Lots of privacy. And uh, we've decided to spend a couple extra nights here. Whereas some nights, you just kind of pull over in an easy spot and continue on the next day. But we kind of slowed down and really wanted to take in this spot. So. So sometimes it's worth it to actually spend extra time to find a spot like this. Yeah. Like we probably drove down a bunch of probably three or four back roads trying to find this exact spot. And that was totally worth it. Yeah. And because we, like, we could tell there's there's got to be some spot around here close to the lake. We just yeah. had a feeling. Whereas some places, it's like you, there's nothing really around that you're wanting to get close to, say. Whereas here, like, we really wanted to experience this lake life. Are you feeling okay to pack up and uh, hit the road a little more today? Yeah, just finishing my coffee. Just and finishing then, the coffee. And I'll be good to go. <laughs> okay, I'll start packing up. No, we didn't make it very far yesterday. We didn't. We'll tell you more about that in a moment, but you, we think, do we think we've got another lesson? Yeah, I think we do. Another thing I'm learning is to not be shy and actually make some friends on the road, <laughs> especially when you get to these places that you have never been before and you're not really aware what's around. Sometimes those conversations lead to like literally the best travel advice places that people have just been and you're like you gotta see this and it's fun to see or that's totally not worth going yeah. to don't bother with yeah, that yeah. hey this is on our list is it worth it no go this way <laughs> so that dovetails nicely into the reason why we didn't make it very far yesterday <laughs> we made it about an hour up the atlin lake because while we were on the road we, we ran into some internet friends that are now real life friends, Jason and Kara. And they've been on, they've been full time in the rig for over half a year. So six months plus, I think. I think they're at eight months now. Let's go to get a lesson from them. That is so cool, Jason. <laughs> Does that ever get old? No. <laughs> that is so fun. So I originally found Jason's rig and his YouTube channel from searching up like S-Bar diesel heaters or something like that. And uh, this truck is a F550 diesel, started as a flat deck crane truck thing. And across how many years? Two years, three years? A handful of years, completely <laughs> custom built this aluminum exoskeleton frame that he made in 3D and then got these composite honeycomb insulated panels cut out, welded the whole thing together, glued the panels, riveted the panels. like. Everything about this rig is so custom. Do you have a travel tip for us? Yes, you it's a hand-me-down travel tip I actually got from uh, Johan we met in Mexico and he told us pretty early on in that trip, slow down. If yeah. you're gonna stop in a spot, stay there two nights because you'll run into somebody that has been in the area and gives you those travel tips or locations to go to that aren't on the map and you wouldn't find otherwise and you make those really great connections that are memorable. inside the spaceship here. So freezers here, cooktops here, sink, additional fridge. Second fridge here. No propane in sight. So this is this is the local server that is showing all your basically all your all your vitals, your power systems, yeah. everything from here. Power load and so on. It's also where the uh, camera system shows uh, the view of any movement, but then day to day use there where I just pull this out this far and I can lights on or lights off which I can reach from bed and then it's out of the way. This is one of my personal favorite drawers because it's just so satisfying to open. <laughs> I just love that.
Okay, today's the day. I'm getting kind of fed up with my long hair. We just pulled back into a town. So I'm just gonna cut it all off. I'm kind of ready for something a little bit more low maintenance, like some short hair. Can you come join me? You betcha. Do we have some final lessons for the- Final lessons? For the friends at home. Oh, but before- You just yanked it right off. There it is. Look at my goodness hair. I was getting pretty sick of my long hair. It's kind of a disaster right now, but I really like it. Are you gonna do a good job? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a man's haircut, I can do it. Just cut it all off. Yeah. Oh, there's even more. Oh, yeah, there's a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's looking good. I did like your long hair, but I also really like the short hair. I'm enjoying it as well, but this toque is going back. <laughs> this is going back on. Anyways. Do we got a lesson for them? Back to the lessons, yeah. Um, one of the things that we've been adjusting to with van life is actually just sleeping in the van. Mm -hmm. um, it's different when you have these routines and setups at home, and then basically moved into a new home, right? And so um, I think one of the things we realized is that first month, we were actually a lot more tired than we thought we'd be. The sleep just wasn't as restful, like the same quantity of sleep. We were just feeling more tired as a whole, yeah. which was surprising. And so what we realized, the lesson is, those little tweaks you can make to actually protect and um, utilize the rest that you get mm -hmm. is super important. Getting the fan going at the right perfect speed, putting up the window covers, just trying to figure out a routine because we want to be as awake and rested as possible while we're traveling around. Mm -hmm. But we want to tell you about a sponsor that we're doing in this video that makes some products that are about comfort. And uh, some of them have been making a really big difference for me, especially on the long days driving. Um, but they make some really rad stuff. The sponsor is... Purple. This is kind of a big deal. This is the first physical product sponsor we've ever done on the channel. Yeah, it's the first one. Uh, but I was researching cushions for the driving seat. Back cushions. I was getting cushions. sore. And that's when I realized that Purple actually makes cushions for driving, for sleeping, pillows, not just mattresses. So the same really cool Purple technology that is very comfortable. They actually make all sorts of different accessories. And so we reached out and uh, they agreed to sponsor. Mm -hmm. So it's very comfortable when I initially sit down or sleep on this, but then it springs back to life quickly. So it doesn't kind of compress down and become dead and lifeless and really hot and uncomfortable. So this is the cushion that I actually use on the main driver chair. But my absolute favorite thing that they make, which I was not expecting, is they put that same tech into a lumbar pillow. And this thing is amazing. So it's very simple, but it's got the purple tech inside. I love the lumbar support. My back usually gets pretty sore while driving, and this has been, like, if you wanna try any purple products, I would say go for this. If you're doing long drives, this has been amazing. My favorite thing. What's your favorite thing? Is this pillow is amazing. I've always just had like $10 pillows from Walmart or whatever, and like to sleep on this, it's like, a cloud or something. I've never seen Janelle get so excited about a pillow to sleep on. So thanks Purple for sending this stuff to us on the road. It, uh, it's legitimately made a big difference for us as far as comfort wise. And I've come to appreciate a nice pillow probably more than I ever have before. Yeah, that's for sure. And thanks to our audience uh, for supporting our videos and also just let us know feedback on how you feel about ads like this and working mm -hmm. with brands sometimes because we care a lot about how something like this comes across. So. And uh, do we got a final lesson number 10? Lesson number 10. I feel like a good uh, summary lesson would be um, just learning about FOMO, the fear of missing out, and being okay with choosing to go certain places and not meaning that you can't go other places. Can't and learning, do it all. Learning to just be actually really present and engaged with where you're choosing to be um, and not constantly fearing what could be around the next corner. So, But we, we've had some good experiences of what's around that next corner, which starts to compound this feeling like you always have to keep searching for that new, that new experience that's gonna be yeah. better than the last one. But where you're at in that moment is often, if you can't be present there, what's the point of what's all this? The, point? the truth is you are gonna miss out on stuff. And so just being really like appreciative and grateful and present in the places where you find yourself super important and that's something that we're like honestly still learning yeah um and probably will forever learn as we're trying to travel around and and enjoy this world we live in so hopefully you enjoyed a bit of a different uh different type of video from us on our road to alaska 
yeah i mean we've been learning a lot hopefully you enjoyed hearing about what we've been learning what we've been up to we would love to hear if you have travel tips please leave them in the comments below we'd love to hear them we really would if you got that like go-to lesson that you've learned uh share it with us because really we're still kind of new to this whole whole time <laughs> on the road new. thing so i think that's all we got we'll catch you in the next video and remember life's better when you make stuff peace